Hello everyone, welcome to a quick video that I wanted to make to address the confusion and misconceptions when it comes to input lag on the good old Nintendo Switch. In a recent video on this channel, I discussed the Cotton 2 re-release and its insane input lag, and a lot of people in the comments section were asking, well, how did I measure the input lag? Was I playing in docked mode? Was I playing in handheld mode? Isn't handheld mode less laggy than docked mode? Isn't using a Bluetooth controller less laggy than directly wiring to the dock? What is the deal? What is the best way to play the Nintendo Switch when it comes to input lag? And I have to say, over the years of having the Nintendo Switch and trying to find the answer to this question, I'm going to be presenting my findings here in this video, but there is an important disclaimer, which is, when it comes to testing input lag on the Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch is a many-headed beast. It is like the Hydra from Hercules, where you chop off one head, and a new head appears in its place, a new problem presents itself, a new idea, a new solution. There are so many great areas when it comes to input lag and this console, and there's all these different setups you could think of and all these different ways of trying to reduce it. And so I've done about everything that I can think of, but just my luck, if someone else comes along and finds a better way of playing the Nintendo Switch and getting the lag even lower, please don't hold that against me because I've done everything that I can think of and I've cross-referenced my results across other people like Shmub Junkie, like people on Discord, like people on Twitter, and I haven't found anyone who's been able to find a faster method than myself, so hopefully this can be the definitive answer, at least for now. And while I'm at it, I thought I'd throw in a bonus reading of the Brooks adapter because a lot of people have been asking me about this adapter and if it adds input lag or not. And so I thought, hey, let's get that cleared up while we're going through all this. But let's begin by talking about how input lag works on the Nintendo Switch because this thing is an absolute nightmare. So when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, there are obviously two different ways to try and reduce the input lag. The first method is getting the controller input lag reduced. So how long does it take for the signal from your controller to get into the brain of the Nintendo Switch? That is the controller lag. And then the second method, of course, the more common method that people can think of is the display lag. So how fast does it go from the Switch to your monitor or TV? And the funny thing is, when you take these two different methods of reducing input lag on the Nintendo Switch, reducing the controller lag or reducing the display lag, you get what I like to call the Nintendo Switch input lag paradox where if you improve one you worsen the other so if you improve the controller lag you make the display lag higher if you reduce the display lag you make the controller lag higher and so you are trapped within this frame of lag that you cannot get out of because when you compare the nintendo switch to other consoles like the ps4 or the xbox this is across many different games you'll find the nintendo switch has this pesky extra frame of lag like you'll see right here with Blazing Star, an excellent shmup by the way. This is the Arcade Archives release of Blazing Star which is available on both the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch and you'll see on the PS4 it ends up being one frame less than Nintendo Switch and this is using the same arcade stick, the same setup, the same light, the same camera, the same CRT. The only difference is the consoles themselves. So let's dig deeper into how this input lag paradox works because this is what is interesting and maybe there's a way out of it that I'm not anticipating. So now let's talk about the controller lag because this one is definitely more interesting and complicated. So when you're trying to connect a controller to the Nintendo Switch, unlike a PS4 or unlike an Xbox, there are actually four methods of connecting your controller to the Nintendo Switch. The first method is directly on the rails of the handheld itself. So this is where the Joy-Cons go on. Or if you buy the third-party Hori Joy-Cons, which don't have Bluetooth, you've got to connect them via the rails. So that's the first method directly on the rails. The second method is via Bluetooth, like you can with the Joy-Con or with the Pro Controller or with other third-party controllers. Nothing too special there. The third method is via the dock. So you put the Nintendo Switch in the dock. You go into the settings. You enable direct USB. You connect your USB into the dock. Now you're going directly through the dock for your controller. That's method number three. Method number four, the least talked about method, because it's kind of awkward, is OTG or on the go cable. So what you do is you take your switch out of the dock and instead of connecting a power cord into that USB-C port, you connect an OTG cable in there, which converts the USB-C into a USB. 
then you connect your arcade stick into that. And there you go, there's the fourth method, OTG cable. And across these four methods, I have found that likely the lowest method is directly on the rails. The problem is that the method of testing directly on the rails for me was using the Split Pad Pro. It turned out the Split Pad Pro itself was kind of laggy. So that wasn't a good indicator of whether or not the rails are the least laggy way of doing it. But I will say connecting it directly via OTG with my Brooks arcade stick. Now there was the money. Now that seemed to be the fastest method of getting controller inputs from my arcade stick into the Nintendo Switch. But there's one problem. When you're connected via OTG, you're not able to plug into the dock and move it onto a TV. So you're stuck with the built-in display on the Nintendo Switch. And it turns out the built-in display on the Nintendo Switch is not that responsive. It actually adds a frame. So now we go over to the display lag. Well, okay, let's get rid of this frame of lag off of the display by connecting it into the dock and going through a CRT, as you see in the test here. So now we're doing lagless display because we're going from the dock into a CRT. But when you do that, now you have to connect via USB or wireless and you're finding, wait a minute here, whether you're going USB or whether you're going wireless, you're finding that extra frame of lag is appearing. So this is where things are interesting. Is that extra frame lag coming from the controller where you have to connect via the dock and the USB? Or is that extra frame of lag coming from some kind of upscaler in the dock or the way the dock processes the video? Maybe that adds a frame of lag? That I don't know. But what I do know is that no matter what you do, if you're playing in handheld mode or if you're playing docked, you're getting that extra frame of lag, either from the display of the handheld or from the input lag from the dock or the controller or however that's working. So I've tried everything I can to solve this. I thought the magic bullet was going to be using a wireless controller while it's docked going through a CRT, right? This is the winning formula, I thought. So you take your wireless controller, actually have a whole video of me pad hacking a Sega Saturn Bluetooth controller to make this happen. And I put it in my arcade stick. So now we're wireless. Now we're in the arcade stick. Now we're connected directly to a CRT. This is the winning moment. This will solve the paradox. But no, it did not solve the paradox. That extra frame of lag persisted. It still was there no matter what I did. And in fact, it felt like there was no difference between using the wireless controller or using just my Brooks Universal Board connected directly to the dock. That didn't seem to make much of a difference. So the conclusion that I come to with this video, with this situation is the Nintendo Switch, whether you're playing in handheld mode, whether you're playing in dock mode, does not seem to be able to get rid of this extra frame of input lag. That being said, typically playing in handheld mode for most people is more responsive because more than likely you're not playing your switch on a crt or on a lagless monitor so when people say hey isn't handheld mode more responsive than docked mode in 90 percent of cases yes because most people are playing on tvs or they're playing on even gaming monitors but if you're really hardcore and connect your switch to a crt so now you have lagless display and a lagless converter you still find that extra frame of lag appearing but now it matches the handheld so it's like playing in handheld mode but now you're playing on a crt which is nice so in the end this is a paradox that i just seem unable to solve and also let's get to the bonus question here the brooks adapter this is actually very simple so we can leave it at the end yes it adds lag it adds an extra frame of lag here you go here's the result I suspected this for a very long time when I was playing it because it seemed like a lot of inputs were being dropped, it seemed laggy, and yes, it adds an extra frame of lag on top of running a Brooks controller into it. The thing about this that could be a little bit of a gray area is if you have a really laggy like third-party Switch controller that itself is laggy, and I've heard of these things, I think Shmup Junkie reviewed one in one of his videos, then those would not be more laggy than the adapter. But if you have a really nice fast arcade stick like the Brooks Universal Board or the Hori Arcade Stick, then yes, it is going to add an extra frame of lag in comparison to those. I hope you all found this interesting and hopefully this can lay a lot of rumors and misconceptions about the Nintendo Switch and its input lag to rest, at least for now. Though if I know the Nintendo Switch, it will rear its ugly head and input lag questions will continue to rise in the future. 
But in the meantime, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, notify yourself, all that good stuff. I really appreciate all the boost in viewership this month. I'm really excited and be sure to tune in for the rest of Treasure Month and check out the Reddit. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 172, PCT Water, Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, Ben, Borgi22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Chris Yuzefovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Corio, Danielle Savage, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Entropy, Eric H, FCK, Frank Carter, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Geriatric, Don Maku, Hausu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kikoman589, Larage, Malays, Mark Toms, Maz, Minung, Mechelin, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Rattle Cat, Raul, Real Skin, Shen Sinzenski, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight, Ishii, Plasmo, and Yutsukaya. Thanks for watching.